Hi, welcome to the Knits and Things podcast. My name is Heather. I am Heather219 on Ravelry and Instagram, which is my main two places to hang out online. Um, I am on Facebook too, but that's like everybody. And it's <clears throat> not always any of my crafting work. So Instagram and Ravelry are the places to find me. Um, I hope you can understand me today. <laughs> I have been meaning to record for like two weeks now, um, thinking about all the things that have been happening, all the things I've been working on, all the things I've been doing that I could talk about, and it just hasn't happened. So I realized that this afternoon it was quiet and the sun was shining, so I decided to record, not even thinking, you have no voice, you sound like a frog today, so I hope you can understand me. I hope it's clear. I checked the volume to hopefully make sure that something is at least coming through. Um, and I took off my bracelet so there wouldn't be any jangling. Um, yeah, so sorry if it's crazy, but this is when I can do this. So, long time no see, right? I'm still aiming for once a month. Uh, did I record anything in January? I think I might have skipped a month. I think it's been since right at Christmas time that I recorded. Uh, so this is February, and actually today is Saturday, February 14th, 2014, so happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I have a, a little valentine today. His name is Zach. <laughs> He's 12. I gave him uh, one of my little girlfriend, one of little girlfriends, one of my girlfriends is an artist and she opened up an Etsy shop. Oh, and I should show, totally tell you where her shop is. I will put, hopefully under here, her a link to her Etsy shop. Uh, she's a wonderful artist and she does some really cute artsy things. Um, at the same time, I got his little, he, she made the little, oh, and now I've forgotten what they're called. It's, a, it's not dream catcher. It's the little pinchy things. Fortune tellers, where you pinch and you um, spell things and, and count numbers and you get your little fortune read. She did a, she did those up and then printed it on bright pink paper for Valentine's Day. And so that was his Valentine's gift this morning and he liked it. And, um, I got my fortune read by him today, so that was his cute little Valentine's gift. Um, and that's about it. Other than that, I don't really do much for Valentine's Day. There's no, no sweetheart out there for me currently, so it's just a time for me and my boy to love on each other. <laughs> um, so, but I hope you're having a romantical Valentine's Day and all, because those are the good kind. But that rarely ever happens for me, so eh, whatever. Um, and. This is going to be my February recording, so I just want to real quick go through what I've been working on, because it's been a lot, and the things that I've been doing, because it's been a lot, and things that are coming up. So, with that, we're going to move right on to thing. So, thing one is knitting, and I can show you my socks that I'm knitting. I am knitting some socks for a friend. These are done with Debbie Nor Deborah Norville Serenity Sock Collection. Uh, this is the uh, pink sugar colorway and these are going to be for the girlfriend that rode on um, that did the road trip with me for the cruise that we just took. She it was her car that we used and we all kind of rode together. Uh, one sock is done. There's one I'm just doing the, a toe up tube and then I'm going to go in and put an afterthought heel in. I did those, I finished that, the first pair that I did like this and it turned out wonderfully. Putting that heel in was so easy. Oh my goodness, it was so easy to measure where you think the foot should be and do the one little snip. Um, the one tip that I heard from one of the videos, because I consulted a couple videos before I started, uh, was to wash and block the sock first and that way the yarn has not only been knitted into this tube for quite a while, but now it's got the, you know, the water memory. So it's really, the stitches are not going to go anywhere. When you do that little snip, you think, oh my God, I just got my knitting. It's all going to come unraveled. And it's not unless you purposely pick it apart. So really great video. The Knit Girls and um, Kirby Warby also have great um, video tutorials on YouTube for doing your true afterthought heel where you have no idea where the heel is going to be at first. You just knit a tube and you go back when you decide what size you want the foot. So that's the first project. <coughs> and the next thing I'm working on, the family walking around, the next thing I'm working on is the Miranda knit along with 
the Knitting Samurai, staff of the Knitting Samurai is having this, doing this knit along with her group until the end of February. And so I'm trying Miranda again, which is again turning out too big, but I think I've caught it in time. Uh, the last time, last time I was working on this, I caught it, that it might be getting too big. And so I made some adjustments and I think it's going to work out now. So this is the progress and I hope you can see it. I think it's so bright in here today that I'm getting a little bit of a haze. Ooh, especially off of my scarf. Here, let's do that. <laughs> so there's my Miranda. I'm knitting this out of Elsbeth Levold Silky Wool. And this is, I believe it's called charcoal, but it's a gorgeous deep gray. But you know, it's got that heathered look to it. Uh, color to Dialog 64. I could have sworn somewhere on one of these balls it says charcoal. And so I was knitting, I believe at first I was knitting the 39, and which would have been actually right at my measurements and then I did some measuring and I discovered that it was turning out too big and I've had that happen with Silky Wool before. I thought maybe it would be different because this is a, this is the Silky Wool XL which I think is actually a little bit smaller or um, a little bit of a finer gauge, finer weight gauge than the pattern calls for. So I thought that I wouldn't have that problem or if I did it would be okay since it's a little bit smaller yarn um, and I'm glad I checked because I'm now knitting for instead of the uh, I don't see the pad. I don't see the page that has the inches. So now I'm knitting for the next size down. I think it's like a 37. Anyway, whatever the first the first pattern, the first size that I was knitting, I'm now knitting to a size down because it was turning out to be just a tad too big. So hopefully now it will be okay. And I've got you know a pretty good start to the pattern. I'm I'm working into the cabling section. A little bit and it's it's working fine I'm getting a little nervous because when we start doing the pocket section and there's all the at the same time and this and that and it's not the clearest pattern for somebody like me I like for everything to be spelled out um, I'm worried that I'm gonna get off a little bit but I'm gonna press on and I've got everybody in the group helping or available to help so I think it'll I think it'll work out okay but it's still making me a little nervous so socks Miranda I have another sock that I'm working on this is, oh, and this, if you're, well, I'm sure you're past where I am if you're in this group. I'm working on a mystery sock. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm working on a mystery sock pattern with the Knitters Brewing Company. Uh, and this is my, this is my, well, this is the first toe that I've done past the, um, the first clue. I got to the first clue on one sock and then I had to stop and do some knitting for a baby. You'll see that in just a minute. So I knit just clue one on one sock and then I took the rest of the time while I was kind of working on the baby items to um, split the ball in half so that I wouldn't have the two balls to have to untangle, or the two ends, one from the middle and one from the outside, to have to untangle all the time. I didn't want to worry about that. So I split it into two balls and then I started this sock this morning because I'm at the finishing point for the baby blanket. So this is the second sock and I love the pattern. I think it's really great, but I think it's turning out too big. And it's, it's, there's a lot to it to get the sock started because I mean the patterning starts immediately. I mean, I think like six rows in and the pattern starts. So I'm considering, I'm considering changing going back and changing and doing the smaller size because I went to knit the middle size based on my measurement around my foot, which I usually never do. I just usually knit whatever sock it says. But based on the fact that in the pattern they had an option of three different sizes, a regular size, a medium, and a large, I figured, oh, well, maybe there's something to this. Maybe there's something I'm going to need to do something extra special. But this is a lazy pattern, and it seems very, very wide. Um, so I'm getting a little concerned. You know, when I hold it up to... I hold it up to this sock, which admittedly this sock is a bit narrow, but when I hold it up to this sock, there's a lot extra. And I may be a sizable girl, but I don't have sizable feet. <laughs> My feet are pretty normal. And they are wide, but this is this still looks very wide. And I mean I'm mean, somebody who's used to wearing knitted socks. So I'm a little concerned. So my choices are either press on, I have a cousin that I do believe I could give these to, 
who is a sizable girl and has sizable feet. So I think maybe I could just knit them for her and she would love that. Um, she doesn't always take care of her hand knits though, which is why I'm kind of hesitant about that. Or I could rip it out and start again. So I'm kind of thinking what to do with that and I'll probably just continue working on Miranda today while I kind of mull it over. All right, so Miranda, the socks, the mystery sock. I have been working on my sock yarn blanket, but I don't think I have any squares here. The other blanket that I've been working on though, I have a coworker who is expecting her second baby, a little girl. And so I have been working on a cabled baby blanket and I started it, I started back in January um, thinking, oh, she's due in March and this is her second baby and she looks very uncomfortable already. I better start knitting because she's gonna have that baby soon. She's gonna have that baby earlier than her due date. Um, and she's looking very uncomfortable. We had actually had her shower at work um, and just a little mini shower because it's the second baby even with us. Like we were all there and gave her a, the big gigantic hoopla uh, for the first baby two years ago. Um, so we just did a little small thing and um, you know really just pitched in and gave her money. But a couple of people gave gifts and I had intended to have this ready and then all of this happened. So it didn't happen. The blanket didn't didn't get there for the shower, but it's here now and it's nearly finished. I just finished the edging. I just have to sew in all of the bazillion ends <clears throat> tonight and wash it, lock it, and have it ready for Monday morning. So I've already informed her that she cannot have the baby until Monday because she can't have the baby until she gets her blanket. So I knit lovely strips of cables and sewed them together for a blanket. So here I'll try and do the whole pan, but I don't know that, you, that the blanket's all fitting in the shot. So there's the whole blanket. You see it all? Yes. So I love this size blanket. When my son was born, I had a dear family friend that made a blanket this size for me, and I that was the one I used the most because it was the easiest. It wasn't you didn't wasn't big and drapey where you had to fold it. It didn't drag on the floor. It didn't get caught underneath the car seat when you went to take the car seat in and out. Um, this was the perfect size. So every time I make baby blankets, this is the size I aim for. And doing these strips of cable really worked out well. So I really loved it. And all I did was I had seen this idea in <coughs> one of the pattern books. I want to even say it was like Mary Maxim that my mom still gets in the mail. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had seen the idea and then searched on Ravelry. And of course, there were people on Ravelry who had done it. And some people chose, you know, one cable that they liked and they did the whole thing in that cable. I think the Mary Maxim was either different cables or different colors of the same cable, of the same cable. Um, but with this one, I just went to my stitch dictionary and I think I still have it. Yep. <clears throat> my field guide of knitting. And all I did was mark, I went through and looked, um, this book is really good because it has sectioned off into the different types of knitting that you can do. Oh, <laughs> they even have an icon for things like, and I love this one, look at that, mindless knitting, so you can watch TV while you're doing it. So it has um, different texture stitches, and then it goes into the different, so there's all those, and, I, and they're all pretty much the same, so it's all pinkies and oranges and reds, and then it starts in with the different yellows. Oh, heart. Look at the little, oh, it's called blackberry stitch, but doesn't that look like a heart? Cute. And then it starts in with cables. So there's all the different cables. So I went through and I chose a couple cables that I liked. That was on my list at first. And then I, then I remembered that, um, my coworker is naming her daughter Trinity. So I went and looked for things with threes. Um, and so I changed things around a little bit. And so what the uh, so the two brown cables are the three strand it's just a basic three strand cable but that's where the trinity part came in i wanted to make sure that there was something with threes in it the middle one is called snakes and ladders which if you um, know your gaming history shoots and ladders is a very old ancient game and it used to be called snakes and ladders and so that i thought was appropriate for a child's blanket and so i did that one in the pink to kind of soften up the whole snake idea and then, let's show this one first. This one is, 
hugs and kisses. So the hugs and kisses cable has to be in a baby blanket as well, right? Because you want to hug and kiss on your newborn, except that I was going to do two of these. No, actually, I was going to do, the original plan was to do a hugs and kisses panel and then something else, because there was another cable that I liked, um, the one that I was just showing you, that was has kind of like a flattened look in places. I love that cable. Where did it go? That one. That oversized cable. I love the smooshy look of that. Um, but then I went to knit the hugs and kisses cable and I was at knit group and I was talking and I got distracted and I had knit about five cables and I was, you know, held it out to look at and I went, I don't see any X's in here. <laughs> I had memorized, thought that I had the cable down pat. So I'm like, oh, that's all I have to do. I'll just keep doing that. Talking away, knitting away and look down. I had done all hugs. So this is the hugs cable <laughs> and this is the hugs and kisses cable whatever so I think it is lovely and so this will go for baby Trinity as soon as I tie in all the ends and block it so I like I really like that idea so I hope somebody else has a baby soon so I can knit another one because that was fun very very fun and so that I think that's what I've been working on so let's go on to thing two I actually have spinning So for thing two, I have in my notes that I finished something and I can't for the life of me remember what I finished. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I'm working on now, but I have no idea what I had been working on that I might have finished. I don't know. So um, before I get to thing two, I have my bobbin sitting in my new mug. I posted about this on Instagram and Facebook as earlier this week because this was my um, Valentine's gift. I just think this is hilarious. And I said when I posted that I'm imagining the conversation was, oh, sweetie, what would you like to get your teacher for Valentine's Day? And this little girl is so sassy. She would probably be like, I don't know, but she drinks a ton of coffee every morning. Because look how big this mug is. <laughs> it's like as big as my face. Hilarious. But this is totally, I would totally drink out of this. And I would be drinking out of it now, except that I haven't washed it yet. So for now, it's holding my bobbin that I am spinning. This is... Some lovely neighborhood fiber company um, fiber and this is from when she used to dye fiber I don't think she does dye fiber anymore this is from back when she was in oh I forget the neighborhood that she was in in DC the first time before she moved away from us and then came back to us um, and it has no name to it it's just beautiful greens and browns and I loved it. I went to a dye workshop at her house one time with my sister and some other random people that had signed up for the class. And she had things for sale in her studio. So I bought this at the time. There's no, there's no tag about fiber content, name, nothing. So it's just a big pile of green and brown, green and brown fluff. And what is, I don't know her color names. I know the colors that I like, but I don't know the colorway names because she does things like Rock Creek Park, which I just heard. I was listening to the Yarn Yaks, and I know they said Rock Creek Park was a beautiful green. So I don't know if this is close to Rock Creek Park or what. And I have yarn of hers upstairs all spun up and ready to knit um, a cute little cardigan out of. And I, I know that it's blue. It's like different blues. I think blues to brown. Uh, different tonal blues. And I have no idea what the colorway name is because it just doesn't... It's not my thinking, I guess, that named the colorway, so it does not lock in at all. I cannot ever remember what my favorite colorway name is, except for Lauraville, because I know that's my favorite. It's like a, a steely gray um, lavender type color, and I know that one because I love it so much, and that's the only one I remember. I don't remember any others. None of them. <laughs> so, but it's, her stuff is always so gorgeous. So that is, that's it. to clear my throat and get undisgusting. Um, so other things you can think is where I talk about uh, stash acquisition, things that I've just gotten or things that I'm planning on doing, um, that I'm thinking about doing. And so I did, let's see, when was it? It was the end of January. So it was, it was only a couple weeks ago. And I had heard back when they first announced their tour dates that 
the Steven and Steven duo was touring their mixtape tour and the yarn shop closest to me because I have a couple nearby that I kind of all consider my local yarn shops um, the yarn shop closest to me was the logic choice logical choice so I went online when I knew their tour was coming up and saw you know kind of scoped out the dates and everything <clears throat> And then when reg registration opened up, I went on the website and looked at what was available, looked at the times and dates. I should have done this early because as I was trying to decide, everything sold out. <laughs> the things that appealed to me that were on days that I could go sold out immediately. There are so many people that are keyed in and clued into the shop. Um, it's Fiber Space in Alexandria, Virginia. And it's probably 20 minutes away from me. So it really is my local yarn shop. And I couldn't get in. So I saw another thing a few days later about um, their tour again. And I looked at the dates and they said, they listed a couple different dates that they were going to be in Maryland. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to go to one of the other shops. So I looked around and sure enough, they were going to be at one of the shops that's actually, it's pretty far away. It takes over an hour for me to get there. Um, and it's it's in like the northwestern part of the area, not of Maryland, because western Maryland goes way out to Virginia, or to West Virginia. But um, it's so far north that you start seeing signs for Pennsylvania. And I'm way down like in the middle of the state near where D.C. is. So it was a while, but it was on a, the event that I wanted to do, the little, just the little wine and cheese tasting and kind of, um, you know, seeing their their wares and getting to talk to them was like on a Monday night and that's a great night for me because that's nights when my son goes with his dad for dinner so I'm like that's perfect why don't I just sign up for that um and so I signed up I put a note out in my knit group you know if anybody else to see if anybody else was interested because I really didn't want to go alone but I'm like I'll, I'll go alone whatever there'll be other people there it doesn't matter to me so it wound up that that day we actually the weekend before we had snow and not a lot of snow but snow and this area does not deal well with snow there's too many people on the roads and not enough I don't want to knock the road crews because they do a lot but it just seems like it, it doesn't get safe fast enough like other places handle this much better than we do and we can't even use the excuse that we don't get it that much because we do but it seemed, and it also seems like in this area when we get winter weather, we get ice immediately. So it had snowed. It was an hour away. I considered not going. And matter of fact, we had off of school that day. But there was nothing going on. Actually, we had off of school because it was the end of the grading period. So we didn't go to school. But other schools in the area that we're in had closed school. But there was nothing going on. It would snow for a little while, and then it would start raining again, and then it would stop raining. And so there was nothing on the roads. And actually, as I was driving north, it did start snowing a little bit. And once I parked my car in the parking lot, it did start snowing. But when I left in the, in the evening, it was that powdery snow that like um, uh, ski resorts would pay for. It was beautiful snow. And I just you know went out with my little duster and or a little scraper and just used the broom end and just dusted all the snow off my car, warmed it up, got in and took off. So I did go meet Stephen West. I was wearing my um, Exploration Station shawl and he came right over and oohed and odd over and asked me questions about it. And so I got to talk with him and I do believe I was the only one that, maybe I was the only one that showed up because of the snow, but I think I was the only one that did the wine and cheese tasting tour. The other people that were there, I think, had been there all weekend long and doing the, the full day classes, and they just kind of stayed and hung around. And so Stephen and Stephen were very personable and friendly and willing to chat and help me try things on and help me look at all of their um, all of their knits that they had there. And so I did end up splurging and buying yarn, which I don't know where I put the yarn. Hmm. But I also bought um, their book. So this is their mixtape tour, and they signed it <laughs> to me. They're so, so funny. So this was um, Stephen West. Tell me, keep knitting, kitten. <laughs> Stephen just said, mix it up. <laughs> Stephen B said, mix it up. So very nice. And the, the book has some really great patterns 
you know, try, kind of tried and true patterns of theirs. And also the Excuse Me um, hat pattern from Stephen West. Although I think I had already bought the Excuse Me sweater pattern and it's in my Ravelry library already and I think the hat pattern comes with it. But this, um, this book is really great and I actually bought the yarn that I bought was a kit that they had done up and specially done for them that was, um, would enable me to do this shawl. This is Rhapsody. So I could do that shawl or I could do, there's another one as well. I could do that shawl or there's another one that's kind of more just textures or the Alcacini, Al Alcacini, which is this one could have done as well or I could do as well with the kit that I bought there's also a little shrug and they told me they would email me the pattern if I if I asked them for it so and here's the excuse me hat so just really great and I I told Stephen West about um, <laughs> I told him about uh, not you know, not really wanting to knit the brioche, but going ahead because it was part of the mystery and finding out that I loved it. So I thanked him for kind of turning me on to the brioche pattern. And I also got cleared up. He is not Hot Pants Guy from Maryland Sheep and Wool. So if anybody's local, I had been sent claiming that Stephen West was Hot Pants Guy. Well, there's another guy out there with the same idea. So we need to figure out, local people, people who go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, who Hot Pants Guy is that's at Maryland because Stephen West says he's never been to Maryland and I know that we have seen a guy in hot pants walking around Maryland Sheep and Wall. So there's a new mystery to be solved because Stephen West claims it is not him. So he got, looked a little irritated and he said, uh oh, somebody want to run around with my ideas? <laughs> so I think that is it. I do have a couple more things for just general chit chat. But if you are not interested in them, because they do not have to deal with knitting, uh, you don't have to hang around. I will see you next month on the next recording. Um, and so let your knitting keep you happy. And for those of you that do want to hear, I've been really busy. I've been doing, let me check and see what time. Oh, I'm good. I've been doing some um, work with my new business with Cabby. So I am, oh, I think I'm wearing all Cabby today. Actually, I'm on Cabby jeans. You probably can't see that. I'm on cabbie jeans. <laughs> this um, sweatshirt is a cabbie sweatshirt. It's actually like a knitted sweatshirt. Um, and then this scarf is from our new line, from the new spring line. That's the new um, bright lemon liney color pop scarf that's in there. Um, and I went to training in January, right around the Martin Luther King holiday. Uh, went out to San Diego. I had never been to San Diego, so I was very excited to go to San Diego, although I did, I saw none of the city other than out a window. Number one, we were very busy. Um, and number two, my feet were killing me. My plantar fasciitis acted up, has been acting up so bad. I've actually been seeing a chiropractor for about two months now, and it's just getting better. And actually, it's now a combination of the chiropractor and the podiatrist, because I went to see... Um, a podiatrist at the same time or about about a month into seeing the chiropractor I went to see back to see my podiatrist just to check and make sure is this everything I can be doing um, which of course he tried to talk to me about cortisone shots and I'm having none of it so I I do not like invasive anything and I feel like injecting medicine into my body is invasive I I kind of equate that, and this is what I told him, I kind of equate getting a cortisone shot with having surgery, and I want to avoid that at all costs. So what he did talk me into was, um, you know, prescription anti-inflammatories. So I am now taking um, a generic brand of somebody's anti-inflammatory, and it seems to be working. I seem to have less pain, uh, the swelling, because my I was having such problems, I could even tell my Achilles um, tendon was swollen, so I had one cankle and one regular ankle. And it was just uh, horrible. So I did no walking around in San Diego because I was just terrified to death that if I even walked the less than a mile from my hotel to the convention center or from dinner at night back to my hotel, that I would be in pain. Um, you know, any type of exercise has meant that the rest of that day and into the next day requires icing and stretching and immobility and 
it's just, it's, it's horrible to have something so debilitating when there's nothing wrong with me. It's just frustrating. So I was terrified to do anything extra, so I didn't really get to see much in San Diego. The good news is I'll be back there next year because the training for um, Cabby is in San Diego every every winter, and it's in a different place around the country every summer. So the training is twice a year that you go to like a big convention. Um, and so I'll be back in San Diego next year, and I plan I fully plan on I think I'm going to stay in the same hotel and everything because the hotel where I was was right on the bay. Um, I mean, I, the water was right across the street from me. I had a beautiful view. I had a balcony for not much money at all. I was within walking distance. Um, there should have been a cruise ship in front of me, but they told me that the cruise ship had taken off the day that I got there, so it wouldn't have been back before I left because I was only there for four days, um, four nights or five nights, one of the two. Anyway, the cruise wouldn't have been back because it's a longer cruise on that side of the world. Um, and then I could walk to um, a bunch of like history... Um, museums and things like that and just to that general Bay Area just gorgeous so I definitely plan on walking around next time so I got you know all my training done I'm all excited I may have a show to do tomorrow for Cabby and if not my first shows come up next weekend I do three shows in the weekend so I'm all excited to get started I think the clothes are beautiful this year I'm having to like restrain myself <laughs> and not buy clothes um, a lot of a lot of them do come in my size on the samples, so I can kind of borrow from the line and wear them, you know, for advertising and everything. But I like to I don't like to do that a lot because I like to sell those samples off at the end of the season as well. I like to be able to offer that to people um, because I offer them at half price, so I don't like to wear them a lot if I'm going to sell them. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of a lot of times the ones that I wear I won't sell or I'll I'll sell it less than half price, just to make sure they're they feel like they're getting a good deal and not getting ripped off. <clears throat> so that was scoop. Um, I also went just earlier this week. I've been doing a lot of advocacy for diabetes um, legislation. They're trying to get laws changed in the state of Maryland. Um, the same, the laws that we're trying to change have already been changed in D.C. and in Virginia, um, and it's called the Safe at Schools Act for diabetes, and it just it just means that for Students with type 1 diabetes, it's just changing the laws to make sure that they are as safe as they can possibly be in school, which they are not right now because it, the way the laws are currently, only the school nurse, only a school nurse can be responsible for diabetes care at all, um, including um, administering of insulin, um, which that's kind of a touchy subject. But my big thing is emergency care. Uh, if there is a diabetic emergency and he, his blood sugar were to, were to go dangerously low where it threatens his life, there's only one person in the entire school building that n even has any clue of how to help him unless somebody takes it upon themselves to get educated and trained. Um, and what you find a lot is that schools want to claim liability for... Um, oh, I, I don't want to have to be responsible because then what if something goes wrong? And really, if there's nothing that can go wrong, if you see my child in this state and you don't help him, that's when things go wrong. Uh, if you see my child in this state and you try and help him, it, can't, it cannot hurt him to give the emergency medicine. Um, and so... The, the whole liability issue is really a non-issue and it, the law, unfortunately, the law needs to be changed to make them see that. Unfortunately, that's the way our society is with all the um, litigation happiness that we have these days where there's, there is nothing for, for anybody to sue over at all unless, to me, unless you don't do something for my child and that's when I would definitely have... Um, you know, reasoning for a lawsuit is if somebody did not help my child. And that's what you can't get them to see because the laws tell them that they don't have to see it. So um, I spent some time, I actually went down to our state capitol, which is Annapolis, and I went into the office building where all of the delegates and senators and congressmen have their offices. It's actually on two different sides of the same street. And I went and walked into my delegate's office and, you know, asked to speak to them. And, um, it just so happened that the first office I walked into was delegate for my area. Um, 
on the house side and he just happened to be standing in his office talking to his assistant so it's not like he could say oh, I'm busy right now I can't talk to you so but he was very very cooperative once I explained what was going on you know shared my story with him and you know said why I think he should be behind this he actually picked up the phone while I was sitting there and called the advocacy lawyer that's pushing the bill through and told him to be sure to come to his office to sign so that his name could be on um, on the bill as it went through. Um, so I'm not at all political. I don't know exactly what goes on from here. I'm just basically doing what the advocacy lawyer is telling me to to help get this pushed through because I just think it's so important. So that was earlier this week. Um, what else has been going on? I think that's it. I've been a little bit under the weather. I've been knitting like crazy. Um, my son's birthday is coming up next week. He's going to be an official teenager. He's going to be 13. It's kind of scary. I'm a little, I'm a little wigged out. <laughs> so, but he's definitely, you know, we can definitely tell in the house that he is going to be 13, that things are changing and things are going on because it's like a whole different ball game being the mother of a teenager. It's just crazy. A Friday was his first dance at school. Actually, not the first, but the first one he went to. And um, that kind of peeked in before they were, before he was finished, or before he knew I was there and kind of walked in on him. Um, and so it was kind of neat to see him you know, off in the corner dancing with his friends, especially because we made the decision for him to go to the school, which is a specialized school instead of his normal school. Um, so it's a specialized school in that it's it's an arts focused school rather than just the general neighborhood school so he gets to go there because of his oboe playing um, so it's kind of you know you always wonder when you make a change like that did you do the right thing you know what would have happened if you just left him where he was you know is this really better than that and I think he has kind of settled in and he's happy and he's making friends and he's you know he likes school he wanted to hang out and be with his friends and be at school so with that, and because the phone is ringing, I'm going to go ahead and say bye. And so until next month, I will... Oh, and that's my sister. So until next month, I will talk to you then. I hope you're going to make sure. Bye.